Hello! So this is going to be a little bit different than how I normally do a build demo, because I thought I might as well kind of explain what's going on with this guy. This is Joshy. He is a design done by my dear friend Ellison, Little Deadling on Instagram. Their stuff will be in the description. Um, and his design is based on one of the members of my D&D campaign that I have been a part of for a while now. So normally when I do a build demo, I just kind of speed through showing all the pieces, but I thought I might as well do a little voiceover to kind of talk about this guy. And there will still be the sped up. So if you want to see that, there'll be a time code on screen that you can just skip to, to see the normal kind of sped up with a little bit of music. But this is Joshi. So we've got on the timeline here, his turnaround just set out, not tweened. So you can kind of see how he is. He is a 360 build, so he doesn't have a flip happening. As you can see, the arm tracks the whole way through. It's kind of common in studio situations to do a flip where you have kind of at the back view, you would flip it on the like horizontal axis so that you can just copy the keys. So you only have to do half of them, it saves a lot of time. And honestly, it works pretty well. The thing with this that's nice about a 360 build is they tend to tween a lot better because you can tween uh, from like forward to the right or left um, because when you have the uh, like the flip builds you can only kind of tween from each forward view to their respective side so you could tween from like this forward to the uh, like screen left but you wouldn't really be able to tween screen right very well because the screen right would be the flip side so with this version you can do that a lot easier, which you can see with well, something that I've done with Joshi is a head tilt master controller. So I've got a fair few master controllers here. We'll bring those out right away because they're kind of fun to look at. So we'll go here. So this is what I was talking about with the uh, 360 build being a little bit special. Uh, what you can do for a head tilt grid like this. So I have the keys so that he can look all around which is kind of super nice. Um, you can look up and down and to the side and profile. So you could do this with a flip build, but it generally is a little bit more finicky because when you're making a master controller like this, you set the keys to points. So on the timeline, um, you can see that I have uh, all along here I've got up, mid, down, and then up, mid, down, up, mid, down, up, mid, down, up, mid, down for all the views of his head. And then I assign those to points on a grid with the grid wizard. Um, the thing is, if you wanted to do it with a flip build, you basically just have to set two mid ones right on top of each other pretty much so that the flip isn't really visible it's it works it's not like the end of the world i've done it before but this is a little bit nicer a little bit more fluid especially for the animator if they're like wanting to have a character look like this and then look down you can tween between those instead of having to kind of cheat it like you would if you had a flip so that's why i've done him as a 360 even if it's a little bit more work the other mask controllers that joshi has We've got his expressions provided by the wonderful Ellison uh, that aren't really that necessary for animation purposes, but, you know, kind of fun to show off the movability of the build and a fun way of kind of showing off Joshi's character. Plus, just from a pure build standpoint, having an expression chart like this is super helpful for figuring out kind of all the little extra things you want. So in this case, you can see all the little pink stuff. Those are handles. So if I go into render view, they do not show up. But they're little things like this grabs the whole face. Um, you have this that you can turn on the little highlight in his eye or turn it off. Uh, this little side mouth wrinkles. You've got little between the eyebrows, wrinkles, that sort of thing. And then these are the eyelids. And if I do that, you can see the uh, handles go away. So having expressions like that is really helpful um, for the Bills artist because you can kind of figure out what are things the animators are going to want. 
included in the build, I also have um, something that I learned at the last studio I was at, which are extras. So if you look at my node view real quick, you see all these little yellow guys? They're just empty drawings that you attach to kind of different peg structures so that if the animator wants to add like an extra facial line or extra like fold detail, they already have this in there. So you can just kind of like add that in. It's already pegged to the kind of hierarchy area that you want without having to worry about like adding in your own drawing to the build. It's just a little helpful thing. Like you can always add in stuff afterwards as the animator, but just a little, a little something, a little treat for them. Um, my other master controllers I have are his blinks. So just a slider, simple, no tweening on it that go between his blinks. If you look at his eyelids, they can be moved, kind of posed however you want. And there's two versions, one that I use for basically all the portions of the uh, blink except for the closed, because the closed actually um, has an overlay that is not cut to the eye like everything else. So if you look, swaps just so that you have a little bit of a cleaner line for that closed eye look and not having to like line it up absolutely perfectly with the edge of the eye shape because that can be a little bit finicky so you got those and then of course any good build needs its basic turnaround so not tweened because just for the sake of a more graphic design like these it's usually easier just to have the base ones and you can see that it goes around nicely. And then also on the timeline here, these are the keys for the expressions. And then these are the keys for the blinks that I made that I then put on the slider. And this is his tweened turnaround. So you can see if you look at the timeline, I've done a little bit of poking around just to make it a little bit cleaner. But honestly, very little. Most of this is just direct auto tweened. So obviously there's a little bit of like goofiness, especially between like the back three quarter and the profile. That kind of always happens, but he's a pretty like easy rotating build, which is largely in part to his design. Uh, thank you, my dear friend Ellison. Alright, welcome back to the chatting portion of this video, part two. Uh, so we're gonna go through the node view now. Normally I just kind of show the node view briefly, but sometimes the resolution's not super great just because of screen recording. So I think this is probably an easier way to kind of show what's going on with this build. So 
At the very bottom here, we might as well start off. We have my kind of handle output. So all of those little pink things, you can see there's a bunch of them in each of the different pieces of this body. So we've got his head, we've got his neck, we've got his collar, we've got his torso, both arms, coattails, hips, legs, and then the shadow, which I don't have turned on right now because it's not very important to the actual build. That's more for the comp and animation side of things. So they all go into this final one and then into a visibility node, which the visibility node uh, is set to only display on OpenGL view. Uh, so that's why when I go into render view, all the little pink handles disappear. And also if you were to do a final render, they also wouldn't show up. Beside that is the master controller. So that also goes into this composite where it goes into the build. And he has his turnaround, his blinks, expressions, the expression uh, grid, which is the little artwork and the head tilt grid. Um, if this was to be a build that I was doing at a studio, then he would also have his mouth charts. So you'd probably have front three quarters and profile. And since this is a 360 build, you would have to have a master controller for both screen left and screen right modes. That's another kind of additional bonus to doing a flip build when you're concerned about time rather than um, maybe like the highest maneuverability, I guess, is you have to have master controllers or a mouth chart done for both screen left and screen right profile and three quarters. Whereas if you do a flip, because it's the same keys, the mouth works from both angles. If you can only, you only have to make one master controller. So there's that, but we are bothering with master controllers because these guys were being made for a little short that my friends and I want to do with our D&D characters. That's just not going to require dialogue really. So no mouth charts at this point. So if you look at his head, we've got his eyes. The way I do eyes is if you look at it, you have the eye, line art, the color art. This is a sticky Z thing. This just makes it so that if I nudge the highlight of the eye in behind the pupil or vice versa with Z depth, they will always be in the right position with the liner and the color art. So that's just a little extra thing that is just to kind of stop uh, weird layering issues from happening with the line art of the eye. I also have the lower eye line, which is that little wrinkle under his eye. He has, he's got his upper and lower lids and then his eyebrow and his eyebrow line, as well as uh, an extra thing to go with the eyebrows and an extra to go with just the rest of the eyeball itself. So the lower lids are both the liner and the color of the lids are cut to the eye shape itself. And then they also, um, the color arts of each of them cut the eye. So it's a little bit of a, they're cutting each other while being cut to them, but that's how you get that uh, smooth, like no show of the line when he's blinking uh, versus when he is, um, when I pull up the eye, it show it like gives you a nice smooth look so that his eye is closed looking without having any weird um, like halo effect that can kind of happen sometimes if you're, only cutting like one to one. Then after I do that, I just clone the eye and I put a static transformation node on it. It's the same way I do arms and legs as well. So if I go over to the arms, you'll see I do one and I have the whole setup with upper arm, uh, forearm, and then you have all the cuff stuff going on with the forearm that goes into forearm plus cuff and then forearm plus cuff and hand. So you just have the whole kind of pig hierarchy of going hand, hand holding a prop because I have a little base prop input that's just a temp in case we need to use a prop for him. Um, that goes into the wrist and hand and then the wrist and hand goes into the forearm plus the hand and then up into the full arm. Usually what I just do is kind of go lowest to highest. So the same thing would happen with the legs. Again, I do the static transformation. So I've got the underfoot for him, so he's got the underfoot piece for the heel to show the underside of the heel of his boot, and then the underside of the rest of the boot. And then we've got the heel and the toe, and all of that goes into foot main. And then we have ankle plus foot, which goes into shin plus foot, and then you obviously have cuffs 
into shin and then into shin plus foot and then into leg and it just kind of goes up the hierarchy from kind of the smallest thing into the largest thing and you usually at least what i have found works best for me and for animators i've spoken with who have used my builds it's usually nicest to have that kind of um all of the details of a certain part of the arm or leg grouped into a peg and then grouped into that limb before going into anything else. So you don't want to do like hand plus cuff plus arm. It's nicer to have cuff plus arm because you're more likely to move the forearm with the details on it rather than the wrist with the cuff details. But that tends to be a matter of personal opinion a little bit too, so you know. Always good to ask whoever's going to be animating your builds to get what they personally like. And we've got his hips as well. Nothing too fancy there, just a little crotch piece in the hips. His coattails, which, as you can see, I basically did what I was talking about with the limbs, where I made one set and then I cloned it. And then with torso, he's got his cape side, because he's got that little over cape on his shoulders. And then he's got his the back piece of it just for layering and he's got his torso with you know general detail lines torso and then the base part of the vest which is that kind of upside down v shape that he has in the front which i made a separate piece as opposed to making it part of the main piece just for the sake of body rotation a little bit you can kind of have the torso rotate without having that piece go with it you know also, just for the sake of the rotation, it works a little bit easier. And his head, which is his ponytail pieces, which is the one big piece, and then these sort of little tufts. His hair tie, which is just a plain rectangle with a deformer on it. His bangs, which has the underside piece, and then the overlap piece. I kept it to just the two instead of trying to break down the end pieces, because that part, that kind of just gets overly complicated. It's fun to make lots of elaborate pieces when making a build, but sometimes it's more trouble than it's worth for the animators, so. I mean, there's great debate on the school of how do you make feet when it comes to builds, because if you look at his hands, the way I did it was, it's just a piece. The hand is just one piece of artwork. It has an overlay piece that's done on the underlay line art, so that you can have, like, a hand to go over the props, you can overlay fingers, but for the feet, I break them down into multiple pieces, so he's got, you know, he's got his toes and his heel and his shoe lines and his foot and his ankle, and there's kind of two schools of thought when it comes to shoes, where it's like, do you want to just do redraws like you would with a hand, or do you want to have it broken down? And when his design is as simple as this, I think breaking it down is nice. It gives you, you know, less drawing swaps to have to do, and... It can save time depending on how fast you are at drawing, but again, that's a matter of opinion of the animators more than anything. Um, whereas the hand, trying to break that down into pieces would just be a nightmare. Um, but yeah, for more complex feet, it tends to be I more ideal to do uh, drawing swaps. But, you know, this guy's got fairly simple designs for his feet, so I'm not too worried about this being overcomplicated. But yeah, and then with his uh, mouth, pretty basic. Just the mouth with the teeth and tongue cut inside. And then we have the mouth mask, which is for the profile. The inside of it is bright green, but it doesn't show up because I don't have it outputting anywhere. I only have it cutting the head shape so that as i showed um in the sped up you can see in profile it just kind of cuts out uh the space so that you can like have a character talking and instead of seeing like that pink inner mouth like you would from other angles you just kind of see through it so yeah just a little mask that way it's a similar way to how i did his neck collar i also showed it in the sped up he's got what i call the neck cutter it has line art, it has color art, uh, color art mask part that is, again, not output anywhere, so you don't see the lime green. It's just used for cutting the tie knot as well as the neck. So you can see that it goes into these cutters. There we go. And that 
is so that, like I showed, you can kind of have it look like the collar is overlaying his neck a little bit um, without having to have like a separate piece. Some people like to do a separate piece and so you can nudge it in Z depth. I personally like a cutter for this because you can just, you know, turn it on and off uh, as need be. Um, but I tend to find it a little bit cleaner to use because you don't have to make sure you're like lining up the edge of the shape perfectly to stay within the main collar shape because the part that's technically covering up, I guess in quotes, the neck is not actually showing up. You don't have to worry about like lining things up perfectly, which can be a pain. So that's when I try to use cutters, but Generally speaking, I find doing stuff with Z depth is a little bit nicer than doing cutters because cutters can get really frustrating uh, for animators depending on how you've layered stuff. If you kind of do cutters too often instead of just layering things properly, if it's like, oh, well, now I want the arm to go in front of the chest, but oh, you've put a cutter so that it can't that becomes a kind of annoying mess. So I tend to keep them fairly like sparse, but I like to use them for, as I showed with the wrists in the sped up, I have that happening for the wrists. You have the cuff cutter, so it cuts the wrist of the hand, but not the hand itself. Big thing you wanna keep track of. At the very least, make sure your overlays aren't being cut by a wrist cutter, because that's a nightmare because then you can't have your hand show in front of the forearm ever. And I mean, I don't know about you, but my hand goes in front of my forearm semi-regularly. So cuff cutters, I like to use them for cutting a wrist so that if you have a long sleeve, like I showed in the sped up portion of Joshi, you can kind of see how the, like, the wrist goes inside the coat without having to do you know like i said with the weird layering of trying to have a piece that's like the over part covering the wrist it's like no it's just a cutter it's fine and if you want the wrist to be fully on top of the coat you can just turn the cutter off and then you're fine so yeah did the same thing with the ankles on the pants also showed in uh the sped up portion of this so yeah this is joshy took me you know probably three four days to do um I actually live streamed it all on my Twitch channel, which I guess I'll link. I don't stream very often, but I do it sometimes when I'm doing builds. So if you wanted to pop in and see me working on a build live, I'm happy to answer any questions that people have. So yeah, this is Joshi. Thank you for coming to his builds demo. <laughs>